Hello, everyone, and welcome to Merlin's Manor for another playthrough of Final Girl. This time I'm going to be taking on the intruders at Wingard Cottage. The final girl that I have selected is Ginny, who has six health, and she has to rescue six people before she can unlock her ultimate ability there. Now, the intruders are going to be set up also with six health apiece, as you can see right here. And we're going to start with three on the horror track for the intruders. Now, the intruders are, are three different killers. They're starting right here, according to the setup here. And my final girl is here. And real quick, I'm going to go over some of the special rules for the intruders. There's going to be an active killer at all times. And so only one person is generally going to act most turns, unless it says all killers act. And it's going to start here with the top one, which is Trish. And then if, if an arrow comes up, it's going to point either upward or downward. Points downward, it's going to come down. If the arrow points upward, it's going to go up. And it does wrap around, so coming from here to up to there, or there down to there. And so there's going to be, sometimes that's going to show up on terror cards to let us know that they're going to be changing there, who is the active killer. Another way the active killer changes is if I attack one of the killers, that killer will become the active killer as well. Now, whenever someone dies, if anybody is with a killer at all, they will panic. Not just the killer that is active or the killer that killed somebody that turn. You have minor dark powers are going to be applying to all of the killers. And you have to get rid of the, the health from those minor dark powers first before you can uh, take care of their health. Now, there's a special rule when an, an intruder dies is you are going to lay down their person. And then you're going to continue your turn as normal. Instead of ending it right then, you'll continue to take your turn. And then at the end of the phase, you are then going to check the final health token to see if the killer is actually dead or if it comes back. Now, if there are multiple killers that are down to their final health token, you are still only going to be rolling one extra die in that case. So keep that in mind as well. Those are the basic rules for the intruders. And now let's go ahead and quickly go over the Wingard Cottage rules. Uh, first of all, we have some new things going on here. We have these supplies right here, supply items, which you can pick those up from the boathouse has the rope. We have a couple places that have wood planks there. We have in the shed, we have these uh, nails. And over here in the garage, we have discarded tools. And so you can pick those up for one time, and then you can use those to construct these things. And these are drawn at random. We have picked, we have drawn a nail bat, the porcupine, the spike slingshot, and the nail trap. And they'll tell you what they need to craft. This needs a wooden bat, nails, and it's going to cost two time to craft. The trash can lid here is needed for the porcupine as well as nails, and it'll cost two time to make that. Spike slingshot requires nails and rope, which is something you can always get. You're not always guaranteed to have these items in the deck. And then you have the nail trap down here. It takes wood, nails, and discarded tools. And so those are the things that we can craft by using time and the items. Now we're going to see sometimes on the cards, it's going to refer to the house that's anywhere that's in here. And then sometimes indoors includes all this stuff. Plus, the shed and the boathouse are indoors. All these other spaces are outdoor spaces. And that's the basics for the Wingard Cottage. Let's go ahead and get started here. And we've got a blueprint, energy drink, and mysterious pills that have come up. Not really what I was hoping for. I was hoping a weapon would come up. Oh, and let's not forget to do our starting event, brainstorming. Randomly select two crafted item cards from the unused crafted items. They are now available to craft. Cool. A randomly select. So let's go ahead and shuffle these up a bit. And we've got the obliterator. That requires wood, rope, discarded tools, nails, and four time to construct. And we have the spear, which requires a knife, wood, and two time. So that was... That was an event. I don't know how beneficial it's going to wind up being. I'm just going to set these off to the side here. And so let's go ahead and get going. And I always like to focus early. I like to get down to the green as soon as possible and keep it there. 
So let's focus. And that's not what you want for a start. Let's go ahead and discard a short rest and a weak attack to turn one of these into that. By the way, I'm not going to go over the basic rules for Final Girl throughout. So hopefully you already kind of have an idea of how to play or you can follow along here. So we go ahead and we go ahead and do the one success thing here, which means that's going to come down one and that's going to come down one. And let's uh, focus again. Ooh, no successes. So one, two time, and that stays right where it is. Um, so I am going to call it for this round so that I can still spend three time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a distraction. I know it's kind of a slow start at this point. But I want to get that down and keep it down. All killers will attack somebody in their space. Uh, there's nobody in their space. And so then we pull a terror card. We're not going to make it through the night. Okay. So the active killer is going to move the amount that's down here on the bloodlust. So that's one. Towards the final girl or a victim. We have victims closer. So let's go ahead and just move into the shed here and take this guy out. Boom. Bloodlust is going to go up one, which means horror is going to go up two. You see why I'm trying to get that down. And then the active killer is going to go upward, as you can see by this arrow here on the killer icon. And so it's going to go up, wrap around to there. That person is going to then move towards the nearest out of final girl or victim. And that's going to be this guy here. He's going to move one to here. Kill that one. Bloodlust goes up one again. And then Horror goes up one because of the card right here. So that was not ideal. Not ideal at all. So let's go ahead and do the distraction stuff. Ugh. I guess I discard. Do I discard walks to make the distraction? Oh, this should have been back there. They can either lose four time. Yeah, I'm going to discard these two so I don't lose the four time. To turn that into a success. I'm going to gain one time. And that's going to go down one. Now I'm going to I have no cards, so I'm going to spend. I'm going to get some sprints. So basically I just upgraded to sprints. One, two, three, four. Uh, getting all these back. I have three to spend. I think I'll get a search and a close call. Okay, so nobody's in their spaces. And by the way, nobody panicked that last round because there was nobody in a space with a killer. That's the one benefit to them being spread out with this dysfunctional family setup card. There's blood everywhere. The active killer is going to come down, so it's going to wrap around to Trish again. She is going to move up to two spaces towards the nearest victim. So it goes one, two in either of these rooms, this would say the kitchen. We're going to kill there. That goes up, and horror comes back up. We are not keeping this horror down, are we? Okay, let's go ahead. And start out with a. Oh, I forgot to put these back. Let's start out with a sprint. Okay, so we got one success. We can turn it into two. I think we will by discarding weak attack and short rest. Because then we can move three spaces. One, two, three. Saving these two people. We're going to bring put on the ones that bring the horde down. So the horde just came down twice for those two rewards there. I'm going to focus. One success. Oh, we forgot to spend the time for the sprint. Now, one success means spend a time there, and that comes down one. Let's do another focus. 
one success and the other one i'm not going to worry about changing that now we can roll three dice <clears throat> just like i planned it okay be good to me two successes so i can move wherever i want to pretty much one two three i get all the way to the driveway or i come one two three to there I have not thought out my plan at this point. I definitely want to get somewhere I can search. Go one, two, three to be in here. I'm going to do that. One, two, three, because I can come out here next turn, hopefully do some saving and searching. So that was an effective turn. Let's make sure I did all this right. We did a sprint, two of those, oh, and a sprint. So there we go. We get our freebies back. Focus, focus, sprint, weak attack, and short rest. So we got two to spend. Oh, I should not have put those back first. I know I spent the two sprints. That's all that's not available out of the, the main market. Okay. Let's go ahead and get what another search. So we are going to see there's nobody on a space for the killer. So we go straight into here. We're all going to die. Okay, so they're going to, the active killer is going to move towards a victim, which can be here or here. Let's go straight down to the family room. It's going to bring that up one, which brings the whore back up one. And then we're going to go down to Baghead here. And it's going to move up to two spaces towards a victim. One, two. This is not going well for our victims, and dark power is now being revealed. Once per turn, when a killer moves into your space, four is going to increase. You may not purchase focus while a killer is in your space. So that's not a fun one. So it's our turn. We are back to two dice. I'm going to go ahead and do a walk. That's back up to six. Okay, I can either discard a card, or I can move one space and take a heart. I'm going to take the damage and move one space. And the time comes down one, two, actually. Do another walk. Let's discard our close call, and two time to reroll both these dice. Ugh. So apparently, I am going to not be able to get very far. That's not good. Well, I'm going to take a chance. Moving one. I'm going to do that again. Let's see what happens here. So there's nobody in a killer space. It was wearing a mask. Or is going to come down again or up again. If there are no victims on the board, discard. There are. We're going to move down one. That's good because I did not want him coming into my space. And he is going to move towards the closest victim. He has a movement of two still. You can go one, two to there. That goes up. Four goes up. So nobody's in a, a space with the killers, so we move into our turn here. I am going to focus for the moment on searching. Yeah. Oh man, I can either increase the horror by one, time by two, and not take anything. I guess I'll do two horror, two time to take the top card of the garage, which will let me lower the horror if I want to. How about we go ahead and focus next? Okay, we can spend weak attack and short rest. We turn that to a success one time, but that goes there. And I think we call that a turn. We've got 
three to spend. Um, we might just have to do distraction, and we're going to get all these back. Okay, so what's about to happen? Nobody's in a space with a victim. Oh my, what is happening to us? So they are, so the active killer is going to move two towards the nearest victim. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, it's going to be this way. One, two. And he's going to move again two towards the nearest victim. Now he's with somebody, so boom. Now their movement's going to be three and their attack power is two. All in all, not the worst thing that could have happened. Let's go ahead and start out by searching. Okay, so we have one success. Let's just take... Yeah, let's just take the top item. Hope it's something good. It's a knife. And that costs one time. Um, anything you need discarded tools? Nail trap does. But we have to go around and collect a bunch of stuff for that. Uh, oh, knife and wood can make a spear. Not the best weapon. It really just lets you move them back a space. So, play the search card. Where are these? These are from last turn, weren't they? They should be here. So play the search card. I'm going to play... Distraction. Come on, double success. We need it. Ooh. We need enough to turn it, though. Uh, yeah, I think we do. So we're going to... Discard a focus and a walk. It's going to bring this down two. That's going to go up two. And now I can walk. I can walk one with these people. Saving them. It cost me a time for moving. I'm going to take the guard reaction card. Three, they can get to me no matter what if they went after me. Maybe I just get some time. And we need to start thinking about what we're going to do to these people. I'm going to grab critical blow for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And maybe a couple close calls. Now all these come back. They're not in a space with anybody. Place the active killer in your space. Well, that's not fun. Active killer is this guy. He's going to attack, but I do have a guard card. These all go back where they belong. I'm going to use the guard card. Rolling two dice. And I have one success, which reduces it by two, so he doesn't hurt me. And then we're going to move it down because of the arrow, because they will hunt me. This one's going to come one, two here. Oh, and the horror, because the first time somebody entered, my space goes up one. Thank you, Dark Power. And then this one, one, two, three into my space. This is uncomfortable. Focus will not get it low enough to, to roll three dice. So I think I'm just going to try out critical blow. Rolling two dice. And it doesn't really matter at this point who I target. I'll just target their leader. Oh, two successes right when we need them. So, with the knife and the critical blow, we do one, two, three, four damage. One, two, three, four damage. And the horror comes down one. Now I'm going to try focusing. If we get a success here, we can get into the green again. And we did get a success, so down one, down one. And now I can spend this, bring it down one more, into the green. 
I am now going to weak attack Trish with three dice. Ooh. If I turn that by discarding two cards, I take one damage and deal two damage to Trish. If not, I could try close call. Reroll all three dice and see what happens. Let's do a close call, two time. Oh, you're also spending two time to do that. So if I take a damage, I'm one attack. No, I'm not one attack away from dying. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the two. Okay. So I do two damage to Trish. Trish is down. We'll see if she's out at the end of this round. And then I have five to spend. Definitely want to retaliate. I wish I had one more to spend, but I want to hold on to this close call. Getting all these back. And I'm down at one. There's nothing I can buy for one right now. Okay, let's see. Is Trish down and out? She is not. So we get this token. And she gets a heart. Oh, all of them are going to attack. I didn't think about that. I had no way of getting out of there. Well. Okay, Tr Trish is first person. Trish is definitely the first person. So Trish is going to attack me. I'm going to retaliate with three dice. Like my odds. Ooh, three successes. Overkill. So I ignore all damage from the attack, and I do three back. Two for the retaliate, one for the knife. Didn't need all that. She dies. For reals. So I'm in deep trouble. Because I do not have another guard in here. I did not realize they were going to be uh, all three attacking. I did not think about that. There's nothing... I can really do about this other than hope that I'm still alive, but I did not plan. See, because one will attack me for two, and the other will attack me for two. I could be about to be dead, guys, because I didn't think, because I didn't realize all of them were attacking me, or I would have short rested rather than throw the short rest away. That's what I would have done. Let's see what happens. I am dead. So I got beat in against the intruders. It was a valiant fight. I got one of them, but the other two just got me. What would the tarot card have been? Oh, it actually would have been um, a nasty minor dark power. At the end of each killer phase, resolve the following effect. You change the killer up to the next one, and they come after you for a victim and kill. So that is how you play. Not well, but how you play. The Intruders and Wingard Cottage, a final girl. I hope you've enjoyed watching me die quickly. I still have plans to get the Ratchet Lady at Wolf Asylum played, as well as the Zombies. I don't know if I'm going to go back and get any of the first season ones I hadn't recorded yet or not. But I'm at least going to finish out season two at some point. And so I encourage you to check those videos out when they come up. And if you haven't already done so, go back and watch some of my other videos. And I made a few mistakes in those videos, but I made note of those either in the video itself with a text or if it was after I edited the video and posted, I made the notation in the description. And as always, if I made any mistakes in this one, somebody let me know and I will update the description to let you all know of the correction there. As always, I hope you have a great one and I'll catch you in the next video.